We're researchers in the Digital Learning Lab at the University of California, Irvine. We're very excited to present our paper on integrating conversational AI into children's science narrative programming. This work is supported by the National Science Foundation and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Video programs are important, accessible educational resources for young children. This program's potential can be amplified if children are allowed to socially interact with media characters during their video watching. That's why there has been a long tradition of television characters carrying out pseudo-interaction with children, hoping to make television watching a more interactive experience. So what is pseudo-interaction? It is when a character asks a question, pauses for a fixed amount of time, and then provides a generic response to children. I'm going to show you a short video of Dora the Explorer's pseudo-interaction with a child. We had such an exciting trip today. What was your favorite part of the trip? Mm, I can't think of anything. I like that too. We had... In 2018, we initiated a partnership with PBS Kids to develop conversational videos that allow children to interact with the media characters in television shows. The conversational videos we developed are based on one of PBS Kids' new science show, Eleanor Wonders Why. This show aims to teach science to children aged from 3 to 6 through the perspective of this bunny, Eleanor. I'm going to show you a short video to illustrate how these conversational videos work. We made a really fast car. It's so fun to try different things and figure out what works and what doesn't work to make the car go faster. <laughs> what did we change to make our car go faster? To make a pointy thing so I can go more faster. You are right! The pointy shape on the front made the car streamlined so it goes faster. Welcome home, little snakey. We're going to let the snake out of the box. Now that it molted its old skin, will the snake move faster or slower? Hmm. The snake's old skin was too tight and slowed it down. Now that it has comfy new skin, will the snake move faster or slower? Maybe it's faster because the old skin is so tight. So, but now, now the old skin ticked off, so now the new skin can move now. Yeah? Do you think the snake will move faster? I think so too. Let's watch and see how the snake moves. Snakes molt as they get bigger. Their old skin comes off in one big piece. Look at your skin. Do you molt like a snake as you get bigger? Yeah. No. No! Why would you molt like a snake, Sade? Sade, why would you molt like a snake? You're right. Your skin grows as you grow. Just like mine. So you don't need to molt. Snakes molt because their skin doesn't grow with them. After developing the conversational videos, we wanted to examine the feasibility of this technology. Are children willing to actually respond to Eleanor and can they do so appropriately? To answer these questions, we carried out a field testing with 20 children aged from 4 to 6. So among the students, they verbally responded to about 92% of the questions asked by Eleanor. And of these responses, over 85% were topically relevant to the content of the episode. The average length of the responses was four to five words. So can these conversational videos actually help children learn? 
To answer this question, we carry out a study of 77 children. We recruited most of the participants from a working class Latino community, cognizant that Latino children more heavily rely on public media than their peers because their parents both value educational television and often lack the means for expansive enrichment activities such as private tutoring or science camps. These children used a laptop to watch the video, and because of the pandemic, children participated in the study in their home via Zoom. We assigned half of the children to watch the conversational videos and half to watch the non-interactive versions that are aired on PBS Kids. We originally planned to have a third group which watched pseudo-interactive videos, but we had to scale back our sample size and conditions because of the pandemic. Since last fall, we have been able to get back to schools to continue the research, and we're now replicating the study with a larger sample size, including the pseudo-interactive group. We first gave children a brief English proficiency test. Children then watched the video and then received 10 questions measuring the science learning from the episode. So here's what we found regarding children's learning. In this graph, the y-axis is the predicted science post-test score conditioned on children's age and English proficiency. As you can see, the conversational video group, which is represented by the orange bar, score higher than those who watch the non-interactive version of the episode, which is the gray bar. I would like to invite you to read our paper for a more comprehensive report of our findings. But briefly speaking, there are three main takeaways. First, it is feasible to integrate conversational AI into children's television programming. Second, children and their parents had a positive perceptions about this interactive television watching experience. Third, we identify some potential learning benefits of watching conversational videos. Our study also suggests several future directions designers and researchers may want to consider when developing interactive television for children. First, since children frequently use gestures to communicate with others, it is important to design the conversational agent to be able to comprehend nonverbal expressions. Second, a large number of children in the U.S. speak a language other than English at home, so it is valuable to enable conversational agents to process bilingual speech input to support the needs of these children. Third, it is more ideal if children use screen while socially interact with family members, so it is valuable to allow multi-user participations when using conversational videos. Thank you so much for your interest in our work.